Hello everyone, welcome to Rockshire Gaming. My name is Eric Simon. Decided today to unveil, announce, whatever you want to say, another expansion for Deceased, a Zombicide game. So I am back to take a look at that, as well as the other reveals and everything else that was announced for on day three and four of the Kickstarter campaign. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at all those reveals uh, right now. All right, so let's take a look at where the game stands right now. So far, C1 has raised $800,019. So that's a good number right there. We've got 6,762 backers with 12 days and a few hours left in the campaign. So um, I we're going to compare this game later on in these videos. If you're new here, I do a lot of comparisons to other similar games that uh, Simon does kind of comparing figure counts, money, all that kind of stuff, uh, money raised and everything. I'm going to be slightly diving into a different Simon game today, still within the superhero genre. But the reason why is because I see a lot of comments, especially in the Kickstarter group of how much, um, this game is failing right now, and I don't think most of it is founded necessarily. I do think there are some interesting choices that Seam Hunt has done as far as things added to the game and not added to the game. Um, but I don't think this Kickstarter is failing, especially when you compare it to another one that we're going to look at um, toward the end of the video. I, I don't think that's necessarily... Um, I don't think it's doing bad. Let's just say that necessarily compared to other stuff. Yeah. Compared to other zombicide games. Yes. It, it, it's, it's a little behind, uh, but some other very popular games, uh, I think we're kind of right on par with it, especially this being the first DC superhero game that Simon has put out. If you have been enjoying this content and you enjoyed video one and video two in this specific series, uh, go ahead, hit that subscribe button if you have not yet, and the notification bell to know when we're going to put out more of these. I usually put them out whenever a expansion is announced, so if you happen to see on the Kickstarter page and uh, a, or Twitter or anywhere else that there was a uh, expansion announced for the game, probably be doing later that night a video on it. So uh, yeah, go ahead and do those things and we'll start getting into the actual updates first starting with update number 17 i'm no hero this was on november 16th which was yesterday uh greetings tree lobsters the anti-living has gained a wonderfully terrifying addition so as we scroll down we see that zombie wonder woman uh was added to the game and i think she's the at this point she was the second character to now have a anti-living and a living version. Um, so they are starting to come out with those, but slowly. So far, just chair popped. So far, not to spoil things, the they don't have a lot of double characters right now. So we'll take a look at that more here. Uh, but then the next stretch goal may not want to be a hero, but he'll be one nonetheless. If we reach 700k, we will unlock for all backers the Kickstarter exclusive Black Adam superhero, including his figure ID and cart. This is one of those weird decisions to me on Simon's part, and I don't know how much of it is Simon and how much of it was um, DC and Warner Brothers. Um, in the story, and I'm going to be as I have before, giving a little bit of spoilers for any of you who are reading through Deceased, either through the trades or the DC Infinity app, Infinite app, um, right now. But Black Adam in Hope at World's End was living during his initial appearance, refused to help the Justice League with harboring um, uh, refugees from the various cities and whatnot. And at the end of his initial appearance in the comic, he was turned into a zombie. Later on, he basically led a anti-living army against um, the living. Uh, there was, was it, I don't remember the, the, the fortress that they invaded first, but they eventually evade, invade the Gotham jungle um, during the latter half of the that particular event comic. It was like one of those comics that looked at uh, events around the main miniseries. This is a character that I felt would have been better in a um, expansion for Siege Mode. I'm glad he's in the game, don't get me wrong, 
but I would have loved to have seen him like leading kind of a siege mode. I was very much hoping that they would have taken a little bit of a uh, uh, example from White Death and maybe had some like wall pieces that were like plants with them attacking in the Gotham jungle. Uh, but alas, we are not getting that, but we are getting a cool character. Nonetheless, while the Ruthless Black Adam's main concern is protecting his homeland of is it Kondak? I could never. That's one of those things where I've read it so many times, but I don't know how to actually pronounce it. If you know how to pronounce it, if you can phonetically put it in the comments, that'd be great. Uh, he'll help keep the zombies at bay. The stamina of Shu makes him one of the strongest superheroes around. The swiftness of Horus gives him extra speed. The strength of Amon makes his punching devastating. The wisdom of Zuhiti grants him. I feel like I'm. I feel like I'm doing White Death again. Uh, grants him free heroic trait. Courage of Mehen gives him extra attacks, and the power of Atan increases his power. I am sorry if I most pronounce most of those gods' names. Um, so there is that. There's all the different abilities he's going to get. That's going to be a lot of things to fit into his four different abilities he's going to have. But there is his character um, miniature. So then the next update after that was the daily snap and then an addendum to the unkillables box so daily snap get smart i love that show anyway uh greetings tree lobsters it is almost time for jimmy's daily snap first we have an important headline mission added missions added to unkillables it's one of the main things that a lot of people were disappointed with was that unkillables was just a box of figures essentially with no extra stuff necessarily in it although the mary marvel gameplay was pretty cool uh, after some assessment and on seeing your excited responses to the Unkillables expansion, we're adding four missions to it. These missions will be inspired by the amazing Unkillables storyline and utilize the heroes and zombies presented in the expansion in uh, in the expansion is unique ways in unique ways. Defend yourself against a rampaging zombie bane, protect bystanders against an onslaught by Mirror Master and more. Slightly wish they would have added the tiles for the school that they were held up in. But uh, that would probably have made bump this up from a forty-five to sixty-dollar uh, expansion. But that is pretty cool that they went ahead and added in stuff. Again, a lot of times Simon does listen to, and there's another thing that comes up later on. Um, but they do listen to uh, uh, fans about um, any changes that they feel like they can get made, especially with the licensing. Uh, the big one that comes to mind is two big ones that come to mind is the um, uh, coloring on Dakin in Marvel United Multiverse and in Marvel United proper. Um, they got the entire um, Spider-Man uh, sculpt changed in that one. So, um, yeah, like I said, if you have concerns about stuff like post it in the comments, they are listening in those comments. And if it's something they feel like they can add to the game or change in the game, um i they they will try to make it happen so there's that so with that out of the way now it's time to check on jimmy olsen's latest development photo today we have mr terrific again another odd choice in that mr terrific is going to be a bystander in the game um he michael holt is one of the smartest people on earth with the help of his t-spheres mr terrific can gather data and supply the heroes uh, the superhero escorting him with the best heroic traits needed to deal with any situation so basically not sure if that means that you can go through the heroic trait deck and just grab the one you want. Um, that would be pretty awesome if that is the case. That's what I'm assuming based on um, that one. So that is going to be uh, Michael Holt. And then the clue for the next day is, you know, I'm something of a reporter myself. Well, more of a photojournalist. So basically this hint I felt was for... Um, another reporter character, more than likely a bystander. Um, someone mentioned in the comments, I think on Facebook, Cat Grant, I commented with um, uh, Linda Park or uh, Iris West. So um, yeah, it, very much thinking that this was going to be a reporter. So we'll, we'll see if I'm right here soon because we're doing two days worth of stuff here. So next update that we got was for deceased Corbox the Living. Greeters, tree, greetings, tree. Greetings, tree lobsters. Today, we'd like to take a moment and look back at some of the contents of the deceased Zombicide game core box. But before we get to it, we have an important announcement. So they announced that the weekend review was going to be today. It says tomorrow, but it was today because today is Friday as I'm recording this. 
That means it will be time for us to sit together on a weekly uh, week interview live stream and go through all the content revealed so far, as well as shed light on what might be coming next. So there is that. And I'm going to be truthful with you. Until I read that just now, I read this update yesterday. Until I read that just now, I completely forgot that they did the week interview. So I actually need to go back and watch it. Um, I know what was revealed uh, during the back half of the week interview. I took my uh, lunch break today during the back half of it so I can kind of uh, jump in on it. But I, uh, so I know it was revealed at the back half. I didn't look too much at the front half and see what was kind of revealed. If you would like to mention anything like that that you think uh, may have been mentioned that would possibly be a future reveal, go ahead and do so in the comments below. Uh, so make sure to join us tomorrow for November 17th for that. It is on YouTube. So if you want to go back and watch that, we can review. You absolutely can. not Now let's start off by looking at those that have managed so far to evade the anti life infection, and explore the superheroes and bystanders in the core. I'm not going to go too through much of this. I'm going to, um, only scroll through this a little bit so you can kind of see more up close of the figures themselves and the artwork. Um, only because of the fact that one, I don't want this video to be super long with me going through however many figures this is but there are a few gameplays out there already that go over these characters and we know the uh we we know the cards already i know board game co uh showed off the cards a couple other places have shown off uh, the actual cards so we, we we already have access to the cards i really don't want to go through necessarily and uh bore everybody with that so we're just going to take a look at all the artwork uh that is some pretty cool artwork. Green Arrow. I don't know why it's still, but I, he's one of the coolest ones in here. Um, there's Lex Luthor. That is a huge suit right there. There's his Apocalyptan suit. And then here are the bystanders. Lois Lane, Jimmy Olsen, Perry White, Ma Kent carrying around that apple pie or whatever that is. Uh, into battle because why not? Uh, Bibo Bowski right there, and Lana Lang. I don't know if that's supposed to be like high school Lana Lang, and that's alluding to the fact that we're going to be getting like you know OG Superboy, or if you know she just still in her twenties or thirties wears her Smallville sweater. Who knows? Uh, we've got Dan Turpin right there, and Mercy Graves. And yeah, that is going to be all the characters. Again, uh, the cards are available out there um, to look at. So that's why I'm not really going to a deep dive on it. The next uh, update, I think, took us in because for whatever reason, yesterday, that Black Adam, um, getting him into the game, getting him unlocked took a while. Um, so actually... Yeah, because he was he was revealed before the daily unlock, uh, the daily snap uh, post, and so he wasn't uh, unlocked until the the next morning, sometime earlier this morning, or not even earlier this morning. It was later this morning because when I woke up and went to work, he wasn't revealed yet. But anyway, uh, let's, see, let's go ahead and look. The power of the atom. Greetings, tree lobsters. The infected should tremble for Black Adam has been unleashed. Uh, tread carefully around the next stretch goal. He can be a little unstable. If we reach 730,000, we will unlock for all backers Kickstarter exclusive Captain Adam superhero, including his figure ID and card or figure and ID card. I don't know why I just completely blanked on that entire paragraph reading that. So there is Captain Adam right there. And that is actually a pretty cool figure. I like the yellow on there. I guess the entire base is yellow. So that's going to be fun to figure out how to paint. But drawing energy from the quantum field, Captain Adam is quite resilient. Easily uh, accumulates power good Lord, to charge his energy blast. He is even able to share his power with others nearby heroes through quantum manipulation. But not only that, he also... Inspire leader who can push other heroes to do what must be done. So, um, like I said, a little bit of not crowd control, but a little bit of maybe like power generation for himself and for the characters. That's going to be pretty cool. I know it's a pretty good asset to have in the game. Um, yeah. So this was another one where I was hoping for more of a challenge mode with him in the storyline in the main uh, book. I, like halfway through, he gets infected. I think Captain Adam gets infected by the Atom, 
I think that's how that went. Uh, and then Captain Adam basically detonated because he's just nuclear energy. Um, he detonates and takes out a good number of cities, including Metropolis. I think Green Canary saved most everybody by using the Green Lantern Ring to encompass the top half of the Daily Planet and basically save everybody who was uh, on the roof of the Daily Planet at the time, which included um, Lois and uh, Superboy, Damien, um, and a few other characters. So glad to have him in the game. Glad we're not having to deal with the zombie version of him, although he might come in the game later. But yeah, we have Captain Adam in the game now, or he's at least announced for the game. And then the next update was the Daily Snap. We thought it was going to be a reporter character, and we were correct. Time to check out latest developed photos. It is a Vicky fail. Uh, Kim Basinger herself. Today's reward is adding the Kickstarter to Vicky Vale bystander for all backers, including her figure and card. Vicky Vale was a top reporter for the Gotham Gazette, one of Gotham City's leading newspapers. Her investigative instincts come in handy in the zombie apocalypse as she can help a superhero deal with objectives and gain heroic traits as they get closer to completing the mission. So that is pretty awesome. So there is Vicky Vale, the guest for tomorrow, which will be Saturday, is I don't usually worry about a subject's quote good side for a photo, but I sure, but I wish she would turn left. I don't understand what that means. All right, reading through the comments, I don't want to actually show people's comments and show people's names in the videos, but looking through the comments, I think a lot of people are thinking it would be Ravager. So we'll kind of see how that goes tomorrow. This would be a good time to say that most likely there is not going to be any expansions revealed over the weekend or anything like that. They usually don't do that. I don't normally post videos if they reveal like a dice pack or something like that. Um, I, like I said, I usually do videos on uh, expansion announcement days. So if there is any packs like that, you don't have to worry about seeing me. Uh, I'm guessing I'm probably not going to be doing another video on this until Monday or Tuesday of next week. So let's go ahead and look at the next update after this one. This is the reason why we are making a video today, folks. They announced Gotham Knights. So we've got greetings, tree lobsters. We got the video right here. Go ahead and read the flavor text. Gotham City has always been besieged by crime and violence. From dawning, or from daring criminals to the court of owls, secret society ruling from the shadows, danger has ever lurked behind every corner. The Bat family alone has stood against them, fighting to bring safety and justice to its citizens. But in its darkest hour, Batman and many of the Gotham Knights have fallen prey to the anti-life virus, joining in the carnage with the rest of the hordes. It is up to a few surviving heroes to keep the beacon of hope lit on Gotham City's night skies. So uh, I'm not going to play the video for it. It was actually it was a pretty cool video, but I do want to point out one thing. I don't know when all this was changed. But if you look at the uh, sculpt right here for Batwoman and then come down here and look at right here, apparently in the original posting, I'm assuming that uh, uh, Kate Kane was it. They basically made the Batwoman. Um, character uh the artwork looked more like uh barbara gordon uh batman at least the um uh like the new 52 ish kind of uh style with their coloring and everything like that the coloring of the costume because you can see it was like yellow gloves and everything and i think it may have a little bit more of a purple tint to it then you come down here and it's definitely um uh kate kane with the uh, red gloves belt and everything like that. So I don't know what happened there. Uh, even in the comments, uh, uh, Simon was basically like, yeah, we don't know what happened. I don't know how that got past us. We're sorry. We're looking into it kind of thing. They definitely did change the artwork on it. So let's go ahead and take a look at it. So for 60 bucks, we are going to get, what is it? It says 30 character. Yeah. 30 character figures. I'm forgetting about the talents. Uh, 30 character figures, six double-sided tiles, one bat signal token, six ID cards, four zombie hero cards, eight talent spawn cards, six equipment cards, six bystander cards, and 10 missions for $60. You get all of those things right there. Uh, the tiles are going to be the mean streets of Gotham up to Wayne Manor and all the way down to the bat cave. Batman, his allies and his enemies have been scattered between both sides of the deadly conflict. Not even an arsenal of bat gadgets might be enough to succeed in your missions with a horde of unliving talents hunting you from the shadows. There is that. So we're going to read real quick the list. And there's one thing I do want to point out in this. So we got Batgirl, Nightwing, Catwoman, Red Hood, Spoiler, Robin, 
all as superheroes, Batman, Batwoman, Huntress, and Talon, all as zombie heroes. We're going to have 14 Court of Owls Talon figures. And then for bystanders, we're going to get Alfred, James Gordon, Oracle, Lucius Fox, Harvey Bullock, Carmine Falcone, all these other things right here. One bat signal token, one rule book. And if you require this option to buy in the campaign, you will also get two Kickstarter exclusive heroes, counterparts to some of the some of those in the expansion, as well as an exclusive 3D sculpted bat signal. That thing actually looks pretty cool. We're going to see it here soon. So we're also going to get the Huntress as a superhero, Robin as a zombie hero, um, one superhero ID card, one zombie spawn card, and one 3D sculpted bat tiles. First thing they talk about is the tiles for Gotham City. What I like about the Gotham City tiles is that what I like and I dislike slightly is that um, it says here on one side, the tiles create Gotham City itself, which of course can only be properly depicted at night with its oppressive streets bathed in unsettling lights and ominous fog. That's the thing I slightly don't like is the fact that it is night, which again, I understand the whole Batman thing, um, but uh, it means more so that these tiles can't necessarily for scenarios be mixed with the main game. Uh, with making up your own stuff. Yes, I understand that the main game is mostly um, a Metropolis, but there is like Wayne Tech, uh, the Metropolis branch in there. So it'd be cool if that like that tile or those one or two tiles can be mixed in with with these. But uh, it is what it is. So uh, over the course of the missions, players will fight their way through the offices of Wayne Enterprises amid the fuming vats of Axis chemicals up the stairs of the Gotham Clock Tower or maybe pay the respect at the little memorial in crime alley so let's see uh looking at this picture no i'm not gonna go down there yet uh looking at this picture i'm assuming this is the clock tower from batman one i don't see where crime alley necessarily is in this um assuming wayne tech is this one over here that's gonna be access chemicals over there so um Again, I I like the fact that we're getting the Gotham set. I still wish it was the second core. Um, again, comparing it to Marvel Zombies, which is not fair. We'll get into that later. Um, but the fact that you know we only have six tiles and only one side is um, city streets, and we'll kind of get into that um, is a little is a little strange. So. Um, anyway, going back down here, Wayne Manor and Batcave, the other side of these tiles, takes players up to the uh, no idea what that word is. Uh, Wayne Manor itself with the spacious main hall, eccentric armor collection, somber study, and many guest rooms. Access the secret passage behind the grandfather clock on the Mizane? Mizane? however, and players will find themselves in the iconic underground Batcave. Perhaps hope can be found by accessing the back computer, finding something useful among the trophy displays, or simply making a daring escape in one of the available bat vehicles parked in there. So there is Wayne Manor right here. It looks like there's a kitchen right here, a main room with stairs, um, yeah, guest rooms all over the place. There's the bat cave. The Batmobile is right here. Uh, looks like they got some. Uh, what do you call it? Uh, equipment on the different parts of the Bat Cave down here, and you're kind of walking through this one catwalk. Um, as again, as cool of a concept this is, again, not not comparing it like whatever to to Marvel Zombies necessarily, but I'm pretty sure with the X Men Resistance, all nine tiles that come with that are either the X Mansion or the underground portions, or even I think the upstairs. I don't have it yet. Hopefully, I'll have it uh, early next week, but. Um, but yeah, I just, I'm kind of, I'm kind of torn with this where I wish there was at least a couple more tiles, either depicting the other floors of Wayne Manor, not in the bat cave at the moment looks fine. Um, uh, although it is just kind of straight across, but, um, either something adding into more to this, because like I said, we've basically got two maps right here. Um, like I said, I wish it would had a couple more tiles that way we can kind of mix it up a little bit or, you know, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what I'm complaining about right now because um, I like everything on here. It's going to be two years before we play this. so I have nothing really to complain about. Um, but yeah, it's it's I don't know. It's kind of weird. Kind of weird. Kind of weird. I don't know why I'm going to stop talking. 
No, I'm going to continue talking about something else. Uh, so we're going to take a look at the superheroes right now. These are we're going to kind of go through because of the fact that um, these are new characters mostly. Um, anyway, the daughter of Levi Shiva and David Kane, Cassandra Kane, was raised to be the perfect killer before rebelling and joining Batman as a new Batgirl. I want to say that happened during No Man's Land. I I can't remember uh, off the top of my head. I yeah, I want to say Batgirl premiered No Man's Land. Uh, thanks to her elite martial arts training, she employs techniques like the falling leaf, nerve pinch that can easily bring down regular enemies, or the dragon charge, choosing uh, closing the distance quickly to deliver a powerful strike. So there is Cassandra right there. I actually do like her outfit. I like the fact that it looks like she's uh, perched up on top of a building. Almost looks like she's perched on top of Wayne Manor. Then we get to Nightwing. I will say this. Though I like the characters, I don't necessarily like the sculpts or the poses that the the, the bat boys are are uh having in this one but we'll go ahead and read on the original robin dick grayson eventually graduated to the role of nightwing to fight crime on his own wielding a signature ischemia six uh he deals a flurry of hits to overpower his opponent's nightwing is a model hero always ready to jump to the rescue whenever others are in danger and inspiring others to perform their own heroic actions so possibly giving actions to other characters uh and then possibly kind of like green arrow maybe doing like a rapid fire with those uh iskirma sticks uh, i'm probably not saying that right but there is his figure right there figure looks a little bit better than the artwork but i don't know i'm still not 100 percent digging that pose um but it is what it is and we got catwoman cat burglar selena kyle Always walked a fine line between hero and villain. Even in the zombie apocalypse, Catwoman still puts her master thief skills to great use, easily finding herself some good equipment and bypassing locked doors. While she's able to spin traits to claw out and invade any zombie that gets too close, if it should happen that she would be eliminated, she may just manage to make it out alive, though that probably won't happen more than nine times. That'd be weird if you had to count how many times she avoided uh, getting clawed. I mean, or getting killed. I don't know if they, they literally are going to make you count to nine. Uh, but that'd be pretty cool. But there is her figure. I don't... I kind of like the artwork more on this than the figure. I don't know. There's something about the the pose a little bit that's bothering me. Something about, the I think, how far down her neck is her head is going when she's like... Eh. Uh, anyway, so there's that. Then we got Red Hood, who I thought was going to be in the Unkillables, but he is not. Uh, troubled teen Jason Todd was a second Robin until the Joker killed him, resurrected by the Lazarus Pit, um, or Superboy Prime punching a wall. Uh, Jason became the Red Hood, acting as a much more ruthless vigilante than his former master. He shows no mercy to zombie heroes, jumping on the offense whenever he shows up, pummeling them relentlessly and gaining heroic traits. Whenever he manages to take one out, if one of his allies should fall, it fuels his unyielding vengeance with extra power and attacks. There is player elimination in this version of the game, so it's cool that we have a character that's basically going to get powered up um, whenever another character is taken down. So that's pretty cool. Uh, there is his pose and his painted figure right there. Next, what some people were thinking might be the Nightcrawler of the game, we got Spoiler, who from that artwork and that uh, sculpt is actually one of my favorite ones in this expansion. So anyway, uh, you, you can fight me on that. Comment down below who your favorite is. Uh, Stephanie Brown's career as masked vigilante Spoiler eventually made her part of the Bat family extremely stealthy. She's able to go by unnoticed by the zombies, taking unconventional routes to cover great distances quickly. She can then dash in and out of zones, thinning out the horde in her wake. So I wonder if she's going to have an ability where she uh, doesn't have to spend actions to go through zones. We'll see how that is. But there is spoiler now in the... So I was confused about some stuff reading through the comic because in Hope and World's End, she is spoiler for a few minutes and then she... Uh, becomes Robin again to help Damien, who, spoilers, became Batman during the event. But I could have swore I saw her zombified body held up by vines in the Gotham jungle during the initial parts of the main deceased event. Um, so I don't know. I thought, like I said, I thought she was there. If you know, let me know. 
Um, anyways, read it more recently than I have. I read it a few weeks ago, but I, I can't remember from the artwork whether or not that, that was a thing. So anyway, then we got Damian Wayne, son of Bruce Wayne and Talia Al Ghul. It was inevitable that Damian Wayne would eventually inherit the role of Robin, the one and one day Batman. Well trained, his melee attacks can always eliminate extra walkers or runners. From his mother's side, he learned how to be an assassin, performing hit and run strikes, picking up his targets in the middle of a mob. From his father's side, he learned how to be a resourceful hero with easy access to the right heroic trait to use at any given moment. Again, I don't know if he's going to go through the trait deck and pick out what he wants. Um, possibly eliminate extra walkers or runners, so maybe if he gets hit, uh, hits um, or gets hits, he can uh, take out extra characters with that. So that's going to be pretty cool. Um, to see, no, I think some people were complaining about a katana, a katana, 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 uh, not this hand. We have a few sword people anyway, so that's, that's what that is. Uh, anyway, zombie heroes, we have our stupid Batman, our not smart, just a buff guy, Batman. Anyway, Batman certainly has one of the greatest superheroes to ever live. I'm going to read that again. Batman certainly was one of the greatest superheroes to ever live, inspiring countless others in the pursuit of justice. But he is not alive anymore, and that is a devastating blow that compromises all surviving heroes when he shows up, robbing them of their power and heroic traits. So you're going to lose heroic trait when he shows up, lose power when he shows up, either when he shows up on the board or maybe when he shows up in your zone. Consumed by the antivirus, Bruce Wayne lost uh, the prodigious mind that made him so capable so taking him out is not as much of a feat as it once was and might just get you some cool bat gadget so there is bruce wayne batman as he should have been in the essentially in the first place because he was dead the entire campaign or the entire comic series but there is his uh very loose fitting batman cape and all that looking very scary there and there's the painted version of that. Then we've got Batwoman, Bruce Wayne's cousin, Kate Kane, led a cushy life, though tragedy inevitably led her to take on the role of Batwoman. Joining her cousin in the anti-life army, she makes targeting her zone particularly difficult and will pounce on anyone who tries to take her out. Um, so I wonder if that's going to be a re-roll or additional role, meaning I, I think it's Captain America in resistance who or if you're attacking their zone and they make you roll another die and if it's like five or higher you missed uh your attack so that's gonna be kind of interesting to see how that works that's i like that one that's pretty cool there is her figure and then we've got helena bartonelli um let's see she is the huntress even a zombie she is still capable of sharpshooter retreating when attack and striking from a distance so she's gonna be a ranged zombie um character there i We'll kind of get into it in a minute, the other thing I was getting ready to say. But there is her figure and her artwork right down there. And then finally, we have the Talon. William Cobb was one of the best assassins at the service of the uh, Court of Owls, known simply as Talon. Undead, he is still hunting. I feel like they were undead already anyway. Uh, he is still hunting the greatest superheroes, spawning in the zone of the most experienced one and depleting them of their power in preparation for the killing blow. So basically going to the person with the most experience points and taking away their powers. There is that. And we've got new horde zombies. The court of owls is a hidden organization as old as Gotham city itself. The cabal formerly of the elite to bend the city to its will. They employed highly trained and completely loyal assassins known as talents. Unfortunately, the pack of shadow warriors are now zombies. Again, somebody remind me down there during uh, Scott Snyder's run did were the quarter owls already zombies or they were not zombies I thought they were I might be remembering something wrong but I thought the quarter owls was a bunch of zombies I don't know Talons are a new type of extremely deadly horde zombies these killers are fast on their feet and will strike at these survivors with terrifying speed and lethality to make matters even worse they are known to make surprise attacks in the shadows spawning right next to each superhero take them out as soon as you see them or you won't stand much of a chance. So instead of basically going to the spawn zones, they're going to go right next to you. So there is that. That is pretty nifty. Now we're going to get to the bystanders. RIP, Alfred Pennyworth. Uh, no shotgun, apparently, though. So there's that. So he has served the Wayne family uh, loyally for many years and now continues to aid the surviving Bat family in any way he can. Whenever the threat of a new zombie hero appears, Alfred has a new heroic trait at hand to help 
you deal with it. So I guess when whoever, I'm guessing whoever the hero is has him. When a new zombie hero shows up, you can just draw from the trade deck. That sounds pretty cool. Um, yeah, that is pretty awesome. This basically also, though, does confirm that Alfred will not be the Spectre. Um, I'm assuming during the course of the thing, although they might do that still. I don't know. Um, a lot of the characters in here, not to spoil some more of the updates that are coming through, but we're, we're definitely getting like classic, more classic interpretations of some certain characters. Um, like, like Stephanie being spoiler and not like a Robin or a Batgirl or something like that. Uh, Alfred being alive, um, is, is that too. Um, so I, I wonder if we ever do get to Spectre, if it's just going to be Jim Corrigan as the Spectre. So. We'll see how that goes. But there is Alfred's painted artwork as well. Right there. The next we're going to get Oracle, who is not a Batgirl in the game. It looks like she looks like she's just going to be a bystander, which is weird to me because Deceased is was published after the New 52. I haven't been keeping up with the books, but I don't know. Did, did Barbara go back to being paralyzed in the books later on? I'm not sure. Um, I know that was one of the major changes from uh, the original, or not the original, but the post-crisis DC universe into the New 52 universe is that Barbara Gordon just magically got her use of her legs back. So anyway, being incapable, uh, incapacitated, being incapacitated by the Joker put an end to Barbara Gordon's days as Batgirl, but she soon found a new role as Oracle using her technological expertise to gain vital intelligence with her aid, you will be able to know what to expect of certain spawn points, avoiding disaster, basically allowing you, I guess, to look at the top card of the spawn deck and choose whether or not you want to do that or whatever's next in the spawn deck. So that'll be pretty interesting how that works. James Gordon, also not in the Unkillables box. Uh, Commissioner Gordon has ever been an ally of the Gotham Knights. He now keeps an eye out for anybody who might be in danger, helping you move in for the rescue before it's too late. Don't honestly know what that would be doing. So I don't know if that's like a reaction uh, ability that he's got or it allows you to move in maybe and either take a hit or move in an attack or something like that. That'd be pretty, kind of cool, but um, yeah, no idea. So next one we're gonna have is Lucius Fox, not Morgan Freeman. For years, Lucius has supplied Batman and his allies with wonderful technological toys. Rescuing him is sure to also get you some useful equipment and being able to count on his expertise makes most equipment a lot easier. So I wonder if when you rescue him, you just automatically get a piece of equipment and then using, uh, if it uses power, it might have a uh, lower charge. So um, yeah, that is going to be that one. Then we got Harvey Bullock, a no-nonsense cop. Harvey Bullock is, one, is not one for heroics but he can help superheroes by discarding their heroic traits in order to perform straightforward attacks. So that's pretty interesting. So let's go ahead and see what else we got here. Carmine Falcone. That was actually one of the surprising ones when I caught that part of the uh, live stream crime. Bosses like Carmine Falcone are not exactly the sort of allies the Gotham Knights would like to be rescuing, but they can benefit from his lack of scruples avoiding any loss of power if other bystanders are eliminated and gaining power when zombie heroes are taken out. So there you go. Take out zombie heroes. You get, um, uh, you get more power there. So that's pretty cool. Then finally we get our equipment searching around Gotham city and Wayne Manor and Batcave. cave. Superheroes are sure to find some extremely useful bat gadgets. Smoke pellets can protect you or zone from most attacks. A grapple grapple can be used to lift you out of a mob and into safety. A batarang can perform range attacks, eliminating extra walkers, and you can find any trait you need inside using a utility belt. Moreover, players may find the Huntress crossbow to fire while on the move or Talon's daggers to find their mark in the middle of the horde. So that is pretty cool um, gear right there. I like the grappler being able to get yourself out of danger. Uh, the range attack with the bat uh, batarang is going to be a must because I think they said that all the main, um, so if you're buying this at retail, all the main heroes in the game, none of them have any ranged abilities. All of them are going to be melee. So all zone zero, no one going to be doing anything in zone one or two. So let's go ahead and look at the exclusive promo. So there is the only ranged character that the players can be 
in the game. So you're going to get the Huntress if you do this through the Kickstarter. Uh, she does get a, I'm going to go ahead and read it because I realized I didn't read the other one. Huntress is an expert marksman, ignoring target priority with her crossbow and rarely missing. She combines her ranged attacks with excellent mobility, being always on the move to evade the hordes. Living up to the high pain tolerance that earned her the title of Iron Owl, she is able to shrug off wounds and eliminate walkers without missing a beat. So she is the only ranged character, if you're buying this retail, uh, without having to use any extra equipment or anything like that. Then we're also going to get Zombie Robin. If losing Batman was not enough, losing a son is even more devastating. Taking out the unliving Robin is not for the faint of heart and requires spending a heroic trait to even attempt. So basically you're burning your heroic trait cards just to fight them, I guess. Uh, Robin, this version of Robin, Tim, not Tim, this is not Tim. Tim isn't the only one Robin that's not in this box, which is weird because even Stephanie, who was a Robin for a minute, was... Um, was in the books or was in this expansion, but Tim Drake, not in the expansion. So, um, I got theories and now I guess, um, so anyway, so we got, uh, Damian Wayne here is what I was going to say. Damian went through the whole event. I don't think it was until the very last, it was maybe the end of dead planet where he turned, but then he got like, I think within that issue, he got unturned. Um, so there was that. So, um, cause he, he survived all the way to the end of the last issue of, um, war of the undead gods. So there's that. So it's just interesting to see a zombie version of Damien, but anyway, so we're going to have the bat signal. So the bat signal is pretty cool. The bat signal is an iconic site in the night sky of Gotham, bringing fear into the hearts of criminals and hope to its citizens. Such encouragement is direly needed during the anti-life crisis. Players can attempt to reach the bat signal and turn it on to boost the morale of all superheroes, giving them power and heroic traits. While the regular version of the Gotham Knights expansion will come with a bat signal cardboard token, which they don't show at all. Um, basically, backing on here, we'll give you a 3D version of it. And it, this part right in here is actually a token. So this does not light up, but it's a token that has a lit side on one side and a dark side on the other side to show when you're getting or not getting that benefit. So... There is that. There is Gotham Knights Deceased box. There's the optional buys and how to get that. Let's continue with the other updates. So soon after that was announced, we unlocked Captain Adam right here at 7.30. And then we got Penguin for 7.60. If we reach that goal, we get that figure. There's Penguin, who, to my knowledge... And then we've got Zombie Penguins here, which... As far as I was aware, the zombies, uh, animals couldn't be affected by the zombie virus. So there's that creepy and terrifying, but not as much accurate to the storyline. But what is in this game? I don't even think Penguin himself was actually turned during the whole thing. He may have been killed during Dead Planet, but I don't think he was ever turned. Um, so even as a zombie, the penguin can't help but retain the an essence of his mobster days, small and skittish. He hides behind the hordes uh, for the right moment to stab the superheroes with his umbrella. He always tends to be flanked by at least a couple zombie runners acting as his undead gang. So there is his artwork there. Still find it funny that he is a zombie and Mr. Terrific is a bystander. So anyway, so that was that update right there. Then we had uh, update 24, time for a face-off which again makes you at first think of Two-Face, but no. Um, time for a face-off brings us the question at 790. We will unlock for all backers a Kickstarter exclusive question. Um, this one is Vic Sage. It's not the rename on Toya version. So uh, I do really like this uh, character. Um, kind of wish this was a blue trench coat and not brown, but you can paint it however you want. Um, as the faceless vigilante known as the question, Vic Sage uses his detective skills to always stay one step ahead of the anti-life army. Every turn he gains more experience and traits and his attacks become increasingly more effective. The closer he gets to cracking the case by taking mission objectives. If he's able to trust them, he can share his knowledge with other heroes, giving them more experience, power and traits as long as they follow his plan without question. So basically he's going to be gaining a lot of resources and then possibly trading those off and giving them to the other player. So that's pretty cool. I really dig this smoke effect um, thing that's here, how it kind of, it, I mean, that's going to be a pain to paint around, but 
Um, that looks pretty cool. And then I think we got our last update for the day because I think we're still, look at the dollar amount. Uh, yeah, we're still way far away from the goal uh, for, the, for this one. So uh, Swan Song update 25. So we unlock the question. And then we get Green Canary, which is something I don't think that happened during the event uh, again. So if we reach 820, we will unlock for all backers the exclusive Green Canary zombie hero, including her figure and spawn card. So there's Green Canary. It actually looks like a pretty cool figure, and I like that transparent green back there. It is uh, really scary. She looks more scary here, and then this just looks like she's like surprised that she's even here because she was never a zombie during the event. So it says here, when Black Canary inherited a green power ring, she became the Green Canary. Black, yeah, Black Canary, this, that, yeah. When she was infected by the anti-life virus, she became a nightmare. Her Green Lantern power not only make her very tough, but she can also project constructs to grab any superheroes and bystanders in sight and pull them toward her as she, uh, so she can finish them off. So basically, it's Spider-Man's power, I assume, from Marvel Resistance, uh, Marvel Zombies Heroes Resistance, where he basically is pulling people over, but this is a zombie doing it. Is that kind of scary? Um, so there is her character right there, hand coming out of the ground. That is frightening. And that is the end of our, uh, updates for now. Um, hopefully this one gets unlocked tomorrow. There will be a daily tomorrow and a daily on Sunday might throw in a dice pack tomorrow. I don't know what they're going to do. Um, or they might just let the campaign go over the weekend. Who knows? Um, so yeah, that is that week. That is that campaign as of where we're at right now. So let's go ahead and take a look at our comparison stuff. As I said before, there is no real way to compare this to, um, let me go back to here. Um, there's really no way to compare this to Marvel zombies. Um, except for figure count wise. And I say that because right now, as far as stretch goals, not daily unlocks, like daily unlocks, we're at four daily unlocks after four days. And one, two, three. Um, Marvel Zombies had 12 unlocks at this point on day four, because they had the initial six. And then the three days after that, they had two each day, because they were doing two dailies. Why Deceased isn't doing two dailies. I have no idea. I don't need the six dailies at the beginning, but two dailies would be cool. Um, we already are getting a trend of not duplicating, um, a lot of characters. And when I get to the point where I show my spreadsheets here, I'll kind of show you that. But as of right now for unlocks, it looks like we have, unless I'm missing somebody, we have 17, um, stretch goal unlocks for, after four days for deceased with Marvel zombies um, to get the same amount of uh, characters. It took nine days and also two expansions. So don't get wrong there. Um, one is what for deceased. They announced one really early, but um, on day four for uh, Marvel zombies, they had just announced the fantastic four. Um, no 18, 19, 20, 20. Yeah. So after on day four, they announced the fantastic four, um, box and they only had up to eight unlocks during by the end of eight five. Doctor Doom was announced on the fifth day and wasn't um, and and was released later that day or unlocked later that day. So um, they had some weird times with that. So uh, so figure wise, yes, we are crushing Marvel Zombies right now as far as stretch goal unlocks. We're behind if when you count all the dailies in there. Um, but with that said. No, we're not. The game's not making as much as Marvel Zombies did um, at this point in the campaign. At this point in the campaign, they made four Fantastic Four. Over four million is where they were at. I'm just going to say that. There was over four million, around four million dollars. There was that. One of the games, though, that I realized today was one that this game is more even with as far as both funding and, and characters coming out is the original Marvel United. Uh, I haven't gone through and looked at Arcadia Quest, Star Arcadia Quest, any of those things. Comparing this game to another Zombicide game is definitely, um, 
a lot of people are going to be cause for concern in all of that because not doing nearly as well as um, Black Plague or Green Horde or even White Death up to this point, and that's okay. Um, again, I'm looking at this as far as a superhero game goes. Yes, it's different because it's a zombie side game, but it's just a superhero game goes. We are at a point where we're having the same amount of unlocks and we're around the same funding as the original Marvel United. By the end of day four on Marvel United, we had unlocked Ant-Man and the Wasp, and there was one uh, expansion announced, which was Tales of Asgard. Um, there was 13 characters totally at that point. By the time we reached the same funding goal as Marvel United, um, Carnage, I believe, was... Venom, I'm sorry, Venom was unlocked on day around day six or seven, and that was at seven hundred and seventy thousand uh, dollars. Carnage was the next goal at eight hundred and thirty thousand dollars. So, like I said, right now, and we're currently at eight oh one five eight one. So, yeah, we are like I said on par with Marvel United, and I don't remember a lot of people. I haven't gone back to a red two year old or three year old. Um, almost four-year-old uh, comments uh, to find out, but I'm sure there were people who were worried during Marvel United, especially after two weeks when uh, they hadn't unlocked anybody on uh, day 16 or day 13. So um, there is that. Also, all the United campaigns were three weeks long. So uh, Marvel United, I think I saw somebody say that Marvel United lasted longer. Marvel United, I'm sorry, Marvel Zombies lasted longer than this one. Um, Marvel Zombies and Deceased are going to be the same 16 days. So, um, yeah, I just kind of wanted to bring that up because, yes, this is not performing as well as Marvel Zombies, but I don't expect it to because it came out with less content right out the gate. There was only one core and no Lawn Gnome. Um, we've already got two expansions that have done fairly well as far as figure count goes. Um, like I said, it's, it's different perspectives. That's why I don't like necessarily in this case, doing comparisons with the other games because, um, by looking at some games, people are going to say, Oh, this game is failing. But then if you look at other CMON games, um, I think someone said this already surpassed, uh, Munchkin dungeons, but there's, there's that, but, um, yeah, it's, it's just people are doom and glooming this game. I think we're fine as far as this goes. We're already getting a lot of characters that, yes, a lot of them may not be uh, A-list characters to you, but they are um, they are characters who have had who have been involved in very big, important runs so far of uh, the game, even the Penguin. So. There's that, I'm sorry, big important runs of the comic books, including Penguin. That's that's the line. That's the line right there. So so that's all I'm going to leave on this with. So uh, not going to dwell too much on that. Uh, just know that, in my opinion, we are doing perfectly fine um, in this. So uh, I cannot wait to see what other expansions, what other content comes out. Uh, the other thing I did want to point out and mention as far as double characters go is again, we got my handy dandy spreadsheet right here. I did highlight in gray over here, some characters and some down here of the, was it 48 characters that so far have been, uh, announced. I probably should separate this a little bit better from the like playable characters to zombie characters, but of the 48 characters that have been announced either through the core set stretch goals and or um uh what do you call them uh expansions uh we've got one two three four five six seven we've got seven characters out of 48 so far that are double so a majority of the characters right now are either a hero or either a zombie again i know we're on day four of a 16 ish day campaign uh and we also currently have 19 different bystanders uh, we've got the eight in the core box. We've got the Mara unlock, Mr. Terrific, Vicky Vale unlock. That's why that's a little, that's why it's an uneven number right now. It's because we only have three, um, we have three unlocks and everything else was a, was an even number. So, um, but yeah, that is where we're at right there. So, uh, we've got all those characters right there. I think I got everybody and these characters right here. The reason why these are highlighted in purple right here is for me to keep track of which ones are the Kickstarter 
exclusive characters. You have to buy the expansion to get that secondary version of the figure. So there is all that. So that is just where we're at right now with game. So with that said, that is everything for me today in this video. I will see you guys uh, probably on day five or no, not days, day, days, day four, I say. Uh, hoping on day seven or eight when we'll kind of go over the weekend reveals, if any, and how many, uh, and and do that. Uh, like I said, if they reveal an actual full expansion on Monday or Tuesday, that's when we're going to be doing the next video. So if you'd like to know when that happens and be notified when that does go down, uh, hit the bell icon down there. Also hit the subscribe button. As I said before, they'd be really helping out the channel. The channel finally got to over three hundred subscribers. So I'd like to thank all you guys who have subscribed. And for those few hundred of you who have been watching these last few videos, why it's just it's right there. It's just it's right there. It's right there. It's right there. Um, so anyway, I'd like to thank you guys for tuning in to this uh, campaign uh, look about video and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye bye.